The funny thing about staying mostly at home for two years is that your everyday carry doesn't change much. But you've been asking for an update on what's in my tech bag, which for the record is the same Peak Design everyday backpack I've had since the last one of these videos, aging absolutely beautifully. And, you know, I've finally gotten enough new stuff to put inside it, or at least new thoughts on the old stuff that was already inside it, to make a video that I hope is worth sharing. I'm Michael Fisher, and uh, I think an everyday carry video is a lot more fun when it happens on the road. So, I borrowed this Model X from my sponsor, TeslaRents.com. Join me for the wedding of a familiar friend and then a travel tour of all my travel gear on a road trip to who knows where. It was the Northern Virginia nuptials of Tom the Tech Chap and his lovely wife Sarah that provided the kickoff for this particular road trip adventure but there was still work to be done the day before. For that, I set up shop at the Cafe Brew in historic downtown Warrington and fired up the machine I've used to edit every Mr. Mobile video since October, the 2021 MacBook Pro. Yeah, I'm a Final Cut Pro editor, but there are other reasons I prefer a MacBook, from the big bright display to the excellent speakers to the newly resurrected ports. And what matters to me the most these days is battery life. So, based on some earlier experiences that I'd had editing a loft, for this edit, I forgot about the charger entirely, and I even disconnected the power pack that I'll show you later. So, on battery power alone, with the screen set bright enough to overcome the spring sun out the window, I was able to get from a raw audio voiceover file and a blank timeline to a completed rough cut of that Motorola Razor revisit that I published last week in a little under five hours. On any of the Intel-based Mac or PC notebooks I've owned before, I wouldn't have even been able to get halfway to that kind of endurance. And later in the trip, at all the other coffee shops that served as my de facto offices on the go, lighter workloads like slinging email and scripting meant that even if I forgot to charge the MacBook overnight, it was no big deal. And that's a laptop luxury I've seldom seen. I'm still planning a long-term review for this machine. Stay tuned in the coming months. Speaking of long-term commitments, the union of two friends is exactly the kind of event you want a good camera for. And the smartphones I carry are good enough. As you probably know, I carry a Samsung Galaxy Fold 3 on work days and on work nights and weekends I alternate between the Galaxy Flip 3 and that Motorola Razr 5G that I just re-reviewed. Now, Lord knows I've said enough about foldables over the past two years, so I won't dwell on all the things I said. The familiar benefits of the Fold's bigger screen and the Flip's ergonomic grip made it easy for me to host a live podcast from the car, and this trip gave ample opportunities to make use of a feature inherent to foldables but which I don't talk about all that much, the self-contained pseudo-tripod. Group shots with the bride and groom, dashboard time lapses, pretend pilot pictures alongside real aircraft parked next to one of the Tesla supercharging stations. In whatever selfie setting I found myself, it was great that I didn't always have to dig out my Benro smartphone tripod. Ditto for when I found myself at a Durham bar watching the national championship, and a new friend took pity on my total lack of basketball knowledge to explain to me just what was going on on the TV. Thanks again, Joe. Of course, as a phone reviewer, I also keep a few more review samples in the rotation for comparisons and long-term coverage, so keep an eye out for more samples from the iPhone 13 Pro, Pixel 6 Pro, and my current test subject, the OnePlus 10 Pro, as we keep on rolling. Now, when you're on a meandering road trip like this one, your phones are only as good as your accessories. On a mildly hungover North Carolina day after, when I fire up a relaxing playlist, the devices delivering those vaguely sad tunes to my ears are either the Samsung Galaxy Buds 2 or the Marshall Mode 2 earbuds. Now, frankly, neither of these are what I'd call great products. The Samsungs are muddy for phone calls, while the Marshalls are finicky when it comes to Bluetooth pairing. But I like how compact the Galaxy Buds are, how easy they are to use across my fold and flip, 
and how well their accent color complements the latter. Yeah, aesthetics are important to me, and that's the main reason I enjoy the Marshalls as well. And speaking of standing out, when I need the staunch reliability of wired cans, either for editing video or streaming a Twitch session or plumbing the depths of my old iPods playlists, I dust off an old review sample from way back in 2017, the Meze 99 Classics. No noise cancelling, no Bluetooth, just walnut, gold, and solid sound in a standout design. Back on the road, en route to what will become my most southerly stop, I get a message from the friend I'm going to see. And that reminds me I've got to mention smartwatches. God, there was a time when it seemed like I was reviewing a new smartwatch every other week, and I miss it. But with Google's Wear OS platform still waiting to get out from behind that Samsung exclusivity period, things have really settled down. Recently, I've stuck to just two watches, the 2020 version of the Moto 360, which I wear when I'm using my Razer, and the Garmin Mark Captain for everything else. I've said plenty about each of these watches, so here I'll just say that I've been pleasantly surprised by how well they've aged. The Moto 360 is still pretty responsive for a two and a half year old Wear OS watch, and I can still eke out a full day between charges. The Mark Captain still gives me 12 days between top ups, great for a road trip like this, and its sapphire and steel construction betrays barely a blemish, despite the fact that it's been a core component of my everyday carry since 2019. And speaking of everyday carry, nobody does it better than this guy. Yeah, my old buddy Taylor Martin from my pocket nowadays now runs a decidedly non-techy YouTube channel called Best Damn EDC, and I swung by his studio in Concord, North Carolina to ask this former phone dog if there was anything he thought my own daily carry was lacking. <laughs> oh, you have a Unihertz, you have a Unihertz Titan on your Yeah, device. I thought that would revive my love for physical keyboards. Did, did, did it work? Not at all. No, it didn't. No. Not at all. <laughs> We rifled through an assortment of multi-tools, knickknacks, and what I can only describe as rich guy fidget spinners. Some kind of Vulcan artifact. What, you just kind of switch it around? Yeah, this feels like it's gonna melt into a changeling or something. I don't know what any of that means. <laughs> <laughs> Until Taylor remembered that <laughs> some commenters used to call me the Robert Downey Jr. of the tech space. And so he did a little more digging and then promptly handed over this beautiful Iron Man edition of the Kaiser Vanguard pocket knife. Never do. Woo! My thanks to Taylor for that, for the tour, and also the proper Carolina dinner that fueled my drive to the last stop on my own EDC expedition. Those of you who watched the Palm Centro episode of When Phones Were Fun will recognize my old college town of Norfolk, Virginia, which just happened to be halfway between where I'd been and where I needed to be. So I stopped in for an overnight to show you how good I am at spilling the contents of my pockets all over a hotel bedside table and the little oddity from Orbit Key built to calm that chaos. This is the Orbit Key nest, and it's like a I don't know, a portable drawer of sorts with Velcro dividers that you can rearrange for all your personal items, slots up top for key cards and parking passes, and it's got a wireless charger built into the cover for good measure. And now it's overkill to carry this for a quick overnight, of course, but I have to say it's been nice to have a little hub for all my accessories on a longer trip like this. I'll duck back into two final cafes to recaffeinate and show you the last couple carries here, starting with my personal power pack. The Flash Pro from Charge ASAP is pretty portable despite its large capacity, its wireless charging feature, and its 100 watt charging output. But what really caught my eye was its bonus feature, a built-in display to show you how much current each connected device is drawing. That's pretty handy for a tech reviewer. And yes, I know there are USB cables with built-in watt meters, but I prefer the Nomad cables I usually carry because they have adapters that allow them to fit several different devices. So the Flash Pro has worked out pretty well for me. The only downside has been the other standout feature they advertise, the compatibility with SuperVOOC charging on Oppo and OnePlus phones. Yeah, that doesn't work for me. <laughs> it, it may have worked on prior models, but it only charges the new OnePlus 10 Pro at conventional speeds. 
I did tell the company about that, and they replied they will test and try to correct that issue if they can. And the last tech we'll talk today, well, I, <laughs> I often wish I could make this the entirety of my everyday carry. Remember that four-pocket laptop lifestyle I demonstrated in my Galaxy Fold 3 review? Well, those accessories have actually stuck in my bag since. The Lamical folding phone stand, the folding Bluetooth keyboard from Artec I bought on Amazon, and, well, usually the Microsoft Arc Mouse too, but on outdoor tables like those at Norfolk's Fairgrounds Coffee, that doesn't really work out. Anyway, the Android platform obviously isn't ideal as a laptop stand-in, and it's an impractical arrangement for a lot of folks, but I'm an impractical guy. And if you have any phone with a screen big enough to see at a distance, you might be surprised by how much writing, emailing, and other light work you can comfortably get done with a folding keyboard that fits in one pocket and a phone that fits in the other. Ever since I sat in this same coffee shop way back in college, I've fantasized about a future where a super minimal everyday carry like this was possible. And actually, if I zoom out a little bit and think about everything I've shown you in this video up to this point, I guess that's kind of true of everything here. This amount of power crammed into this degree of portability, well, it's pretty impressive. And as we used to say on an old podcast that I used to host, for a tech nerd, it's a great time to be alive. As we hyperlapse our way back to New York City, I'd like to say that if this video has given you an inkling of wanderlust and you'd like to take your own tech bag out on a road trip, check out the sponsor that's made this video possible, teslarents.com. As you know, it's been far too long since I sat behind the wheel of a Tesla, and this Model X took me all 1,300 miles in style. Whether you want the convenience of the autopilot, the pickup of the electric motors, or the happy synchronicity of accidental meetups with friends at a supercharger, yeah, that really happened. Hi, David. TeslaRents.com has you covered. They're easy to use, fairly priced, and it shows because they're also one of the highest rated car rental services in America. Visit them at the link in the description and thanks to TeslaRents.com for sponsoring this video. Folks, I've also provided links to most, if not all, of the products featured in this video down in that description, as well as disclosures regarding what's a review sample and what was purchased by my publishers or by me. Regardless, no company had any editorial input or copy approval concerning this content, and no manufacturer paid a fee for inclusion. Everything you've seen was selected by me for my own reasons, practical or otherwise. Until next time, I've been Michael Fisher. Thanks for watching and stay mobile, my friends.